Yo, what's up, dudes? Uh, I am here with the wonderful and gracious and talented Martin Miller. And uh, in honor of his arrival, I have redecorated all things Ibanez because <laughs> yes, my, my love for Ibanez is well documented. Everyone knows I'm a big <laughs> fan of the, of the product. Martin, hey thank man, how are you doing? So much for uh, coming over. Martin is in town for a yeah. little bit. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and um, you know, uh, we we did a beautiful hike uh, about a week ago. That and, was awesome. Uh, I said, awesome. you know what? Maybe before you go, maybe come over and do a quick video. And I really appreciate you taking the time. It's, Thanks uh, so much for having me in your men cave. Awesome yeah. men cave with all yeah. the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not too bad. It's a bit messy, but they don't see what no, you no, see. No, no, it's fine. You see just the the nice the nice wall. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it's, cool. it's really cool. The secret, if you will, there's there's a couple of secrets, or just like a, a couple of methods, is just break it down. Right. So don't expect to be going diddly, 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 diddly across all the neck right away. Just break it down to the to the. What's what you call it? lowest common denominator? Whew. Oh, those English classes, they paid off. <laughs> so, um, the lowest common denominator for me would be something as simple as. Right? Okay. It's like one, two, three, four, and then one note on the next string. Right. See, so, the problem is, is I. So, when I do my three on the string, if you watch my right hand, it's. Right. Yeah, that's for the three note for string stuff. And that's so, why you can play that fast because you can rely on your on your downward pick slant to glide you through the strings. Doesn't work with the four notes on a string. Yeah, that's the economy picking. That's economy. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. down, up, down, down, up, up down, down, down. But right. let's let's just work on the on the alternate picking. So what you what you uh, got to do because obviously your hands can move as fast. So like, do this. So. We got the left hand covered because that's really all it's doing. It's like right. if you can do this, you can play fast. You have the potential to play fast because anybody can do this. Okay. And the, the only difference between someone walking on the street who can do this and a, a professional guitar player who can run up and down the fretboard is that they can match the two hands together. They can they can coordinate the hand the, the fingers onto the right frets, etc., etc. It's just a bit more refined, but it's essentially still this. So the raw speed. It's pretty much in the same ballpark for everybody. The simplest thing possible, which is... And you can already play fast. You just, you just need to apply that kind of um, fearless fearlessness that you have with your other licks that you can play really well to that one. See, I always want to hit an accent note. Yeah, well, I wouldn't even worry about anything but, let's say, 8 D string. Okay. Just right. keep it simple. Okay, there's a couple things we, we can optimize. Let me look at the pick here. Pick's look, pick looks pretty good to me. You're doing the right thing right now because you're going fast. Right. So, play it slower for uh -oh. once. Oh, just like so. <laughs> Play it slower for once. So, the bass technique looks good. That just means, Ow. at this point, this is where, where my view is a little bit unpopular, is I think you now have to forget the idea of being clean and being in control and just go through that brick wall. It's a neurological thing. It's, it's, you, can, you can investigate this. It comes from sports pedagogy. It's open loop versus closed loop. Just to give a really brief rundown is when you play slowly, you send out, the brain sends out one signal per note saying pick and then it gets feedback from the muscles going back um, uh, saying well this worked out, this didn't work out, sounded good, didn't sound good, etc. It's, it's, it's giving you some, some feedback on how, sure. how the thing went down. Right. So um, at a certain point, this, this takes like a couple milliseconds to go around this loop, which is why you call it an open loop because you can interfere while you're in it. Okay. But at some point, two notes become quicker than one loop going around. So what right. you, what's the brain going to do? It cannot keep up. So it sends out a chunk of motion at the same time. And what you really need to be focusing on... This actually makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. This is just my layman 
uh, no, but what you're saying is right because yeah. your brain can't process it quickly yeah. enough, so it does it in more of a chunk of exactly. data than in each individual and, bit of data. And that's bytes chunk, versus bits. Like when you do, you do you confirm this when you play this, right. it sounds you can only feel the first and the last note. Right. And that is exactly the chunk. You you feel the first one and the last one, and that's those are the two notes you have to focus on, and then just go for it. Right. Then just blast through it as fast as you can, right. and it'll clean itself up as long. And here's the here's the catch, because people go, no, you have to be able to play slow first. Yes, the bass technique has to be there. So you ha you have to have something good going at a medium tempo first. Right, right. If you're going, you know, if, if you're, you're playing crap, you're just gonna drag right. crap up to a higher tempo, basically. Right. right. So uh, as long as that is good, you're gonna drag what you're doing on the slower tempo up into the closed loop. It's kind of funny when people <laughs> ask me, it's kind of, I get different types of questions. I get like a, a, a catalog of the same questions every once in a while as like I can file it under, yeah, it's this one, yeah, right. it's this one. And there's, there's a couple types of questions that I would file under the same category, although on the surface they seem different. It's like when somebody asks me, how do you make conscious note choices? That would be one. The other one would be, uh, how do you add all those chromatic notes? Or right. it's like, how do you come up with these ideas? And the answer, or how do you get it, become a better improviser? These are very different questions on the surface, but they all go back to the same thing. And that is, how do you understand the fretboard? It's so funny you say that because um, my favorite quote of Miles Davis of all time is he said, true improvisation only occurs when you remove all doubt. And what he was basically saying is you've got to know your instrument if you want to be able to just to express yourself express yeah. yourself, and take it wherever you want to go. You're going to be treading the same ground if you don't really know your instrument. And yeah, it's yeah. going to sound monotonous. It's going to sound repetitive. And I would even argue that the term true improvisation is kind of misleading because okay. th that does not exist. Well, I mean, right. what, what do you define as true improvisation? Would, would that be coming up with something that you've never played because that is not going to happen? Because anything that comes out of you is a result of things going into you, being processed I th and coming I think, back out. I think what he's saying is you have access to all the colors. Yeah, yeah. Now paint your canvas. And even I think I would say the, the best improvisers were with that they merely give you the illusion of true freedom and improvisation because their vocabulary is so vast right um that you might think oh it's this seems endless like an endless flow of ideas the truth is they just have more stuff under their belt than others so let me let me just give you one <laughs> exercise or just one one concept that that really 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 helps so we're making conscious no choices right right um it's, of course, oversimplified in this format, but sure. just, just something to get the ball rolling. So right. let's say you're in the key of C. It doesn't matter whether it's minor, major, dominant, whatever. Right. Key of C, let's choose this position right here. Go to this C down here. Oh, now we're actually in a different tuning. <laughs> That's okay. I okay. can do it. Actually, for this, you might... Can you grab a standard tune guitar for this? Sure. One? Because the, this is where it actually matters. <laughs> okay, so we're in a key of C. Let's take this C down here. This is going to be our point of orientation. And to really start making conscious note choices, you need to be aware of the, f the function of the note you're playing against the key or you're in or the chord you're playing over. Right. So let's right. say we're in the key of C, not, not a specific chord. In this area of the fretboard, play me all the fifths. Right, so it would be... Exactly. Now play me all the fourths. Um... Exactly. Play me all the minor. I slide into that last one. That was good. That was, that was good. Though. Play me all the minor thirds. Uh, uh, see, that gets a little harder. Um, uh, no wait. Oh, now that's see? a minor seventh. Oh right, right, right. That's a minor seven, minor third. Um, yeah. And then. Yeah, I would. I would. Yeah, there's another one. No, no, that's the minor seven. There right, we go. Right, right, right. How about right. this one? Look at this. All right. On the same string. Oh yeah, yeah. I knew that one too. <laughs> Damn it. You know the lick? Right. If that is a that's like 
saying hello in Bebop. Right. And you cannot really change. Yes, you can change that, but it'll be. It's such a piece of a set piece of vocabulary that it should kind of remain intact to to get the point across. Right. So that's how how licks work. That's why we like licks. Like um. Exactly. I mean, you could go. It's not quite the same. That's the perfect example. <laughs> Very nice. That's the per that's the perfect example to, to to support my point. You changed a little something. The the the, the melody stayed pretty much intact, but you changed that little something, and it wasn't really what people wanted to hear anymore. Right. 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 So right. That is how licks work, and that's why licks and vocabulary are a good thing. You can have all the theory in the world. Like some some styles, I find have more of a bias towards a conceptual type of improvisation, and okay. other. Other styles have more of a vocabulary-based bias. Right, right. So, a uh, very vocabulary-based style it would be, for example, country. Right. So it has to be. Right. Has to be that. Right. 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 Um, All those uh, minor to major resolution. Yeah. So it, it, you you could be saying, yeah, you're playing over G7 chord. Use Mixolydian, and you will be playing your Mixolydian vocabulary, but. It's not just not going to sound right. Right. You're just right. not. You're not just not yeah. within the style. What what the, what the style dictates you. Whereas if you listen to some modern jazz stuff with like weird slash chords, polychords, and that type of stuff, um, you'll find very little vocabulary in that because that's more of of a conceptually based improv style. So you gotta. I don't con condemn licks at all when people say a oh, true improvisation there shouldn't be any licks. Well, it doesn't really work like that. There's a listener's expectation towards those types of things. Right, yeah. right. Well, I got my work cut out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, thank you so such a pleasure, much man. for joining me. Thanks and for I, having I, me, dude. I will be all over this. And we'll be seeing each other again next week. We will. In Deutschland. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> On my home turf. In your home turf, exactly. <laughs> Break out the donor kebabs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dudes, as always, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out. And as always, rock on. Don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing is going to.